Hi everyone, I'm Bob Grip in the Fox 10 studios in Mobile. And I'm Lanise Lagan. We are live along Fish River in Baldwin County, truly one of the hardest hit areas during what has become a historic flooding event. Uh, people here were watching their houses just being flooded by water. We're talking two feet deep in some cases. Some people had to be rescued. We heard stories of people hiding out in their attics, waiting for volunteer firefighters to come and rescue them. Uh, people said they've seen this kind of weather before, but never to this extreme. I mean, it is really deep out there behind me. It's supposed to to be a parking lot. The actual river doesn't start to begin until that tree there, but as you can see, it is completely underwater. Uh, we're going to take it over to Fox 10 News reporter Hal Sherrick, who's also been out here uh, surveying the damage. We're going to take a look and see what he's been able to find. Fish River experienced nothing short of a historic flood overnight and into the morning. As rain fell at a rate of several inches an hour throughout the night, the river swelled to record levels, surpassing flood stages set during Hurricane Danny 17 years ago. If Governor Bentley don't declare this a state of emergency, something's wrong because there's people's houses that are three quarters underwater. Many roads throughout South Baldwin County have been closed due to the rising river. Many neighborhoods were cut off, leaving people stranded and calling for help. At which point we would be in that area, go for those people. Along the way, of course, you, we'd find others, neighbors, and it was a chain of events, so we'd get them as we came across them. Those rescues and evacuations continued throughout the day today, both by search and rescue crews, as well as those in their own boats checking on stranded family members. Yeah. When's the last time you talked to them? Uh, about an hour ago. We're going to try to get down there real quick. I appreciate oh, it. Everybody. Big Daddy's Grill got nearly three feet of water throughout the restaurant. Dozens of boats are stored in boathouses behind the restaurant, almost all of them trapped and damaged. Charles Davis's boat is no longer in the best of shape. Well, it's insured, but it's a, it's a family boat. We've had it for 28 years. It's a good running, steady boat. We use it every weekend. To keep his boat safe, another boat owner I spoke with rode the storm out on board. It's just uh, tremendous rain, you know, downpour of rain, lightning, thunder. Um, it was just, you know, you never knew what was going to come floating through the water. And it was just, you know, stayed up all night. And I'm sure it was a sleepless night for everybody down here on Fish River. You know, Captain Marla, or excuse me, Captain Wilson with the Marla Volunteer Fire Department, who I spoke with, said they did 40 rescues or evacuations overnight, and thankfully they didn't get any report of any injuries. So that's that's a, a mm -hmm. good thing. You know, I've, I've been down here since, oh gosh, about 25 years. I was here for Hurricane Danny. I yeah. remember what this looked like. And for me to come today and see it actually higher than what it was during Hurricane Danny was just astonishing. And uh, it's going to take a long time for these folks to clean up. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have been saying, that it's just never been this high before. And how when we were trying to get down here, it was just difficult trying to navigate the roads. And I think that's the one bright spot here. The roads are finally starting to open back up so people can get inside their homes. And one last thing I do want to mention is talking about the roads being hard to navigate. Mm -hmm. The river here is so swollen. There's been, there's been boats floating down. There's been vans seen floating down yeah. the river a lot of debris so sightseeing is not advised if you Absolutely. have to be out here that's understandable sightseeing is not advised well we've seen propane tanks big propane tanks floating down this uh, river here we had some guys kind enough to take us out we're going to be monitoring the situation though all day thank you very much Hal reporting and Bob we're going to toss it back now to you all right thank you very much Lenise. Erosion on Spanish Fort Bluff has been an ongoing problem now for years, but yesterday's historic rainfall brought the problem to a head with nearly devastating consequences. Fox 10 News meteorologist Matt Barentine joins us live once again from what used to be a backyard. Matt. Yeah, that is exactly right, Bob. It used to be the backyard of Linda and Larry Kessler. Now there's an arm span from this big chasm to their home. Now, once again, it is an ongoing problem they've had with the city, but last night's rain essentially doubled the size of what they call the Spanish Fort Canyon in their backyard. Last night we lost probably 40 feet of depth and 20 feet of backyard. This gaping hole is what used to be the backyard of Larry and Linda Kessler. You'll now find most of it blocking the eastbound lanes of the bypass below. I never expected it to be like this. We always feared that it would and that our house would end up at the bottom of the bluff. 
As you can see now, it's probably about three feet from at least part of the house going off the edge of the bluff. Kessler says poor drainage down a culvert is responsible for the devastation. The family shared a video of the water roaring down that gully during yesterday's downpours. Kessler has been in a fight with the city the past several years to fix the problem. And recently, they won a lawsuit to get that fixed. The work was set to begin in about a week. But with the new scale of the devastation, Kessler is unsure if anything can save his home. I don't know. Uh, I know that uh, it would be hard for me to move back in this house unless some engineers can guarantee me that it's going to be safe after it's fixed. Kessler says he hopes the city moves forward with the fix. If they're going to you know, step up to the plate or if they're going to continue to deny and say it's not their problem, um, I really don't know. Now, I did speak with Spanish Fort Mayor Mike McMillan on the phone today. He told me engineers and the construction supervisor came out this morning to check out their new damage and are going to reassess the situation and figure out what possibly can be done for what is now this huge chasm. Once again, I just point this out. Less, less than an arm span from their home. One other thing I'll point out real quick, too, is they're not living in this house at the time. Uh, right now, they actually rent another place a little ways away. In fact, they have a bunch of stuff in this house. They use it for storage. Today, they've been moving it out because they don't even trust it just to leave a few things behind at all. Reporting live in Spanish Fort, I'm Matt Barentine, Fox 10 News. Thank you, Matt. In Mobile, a number of streets had to be shut down because of sinkholes. Fox 10 News reporter Michael Brannon was out in the storm last night live. He joins us now again from McGregor Avenue and Dauphin Street. Michael. Yeah, that's right, Bob. Uh, today, this road is impassable. Take a look at what is the result from last night's rain. Heavy, heavy rain and flooding here. Last night, an F-250 pickup truck was driving along this road here. This is McGregor, just north of Dolphin Street, and it, it went into the ground. The ground just opened up beneath it, and into the ground it went. A huge truck there, and uh, definitely um, a dangerous situation for anybody driving along the road here. Uh, the driver and the, the driver and his son are both okay. We interviewed them and talked to them just a little while ago. They said they are both fine. They did go to the emergency room just for precautionary measures, but they are good. Uh, definitely a scary situation. The common factor here with the, with the sinkholes that we've seen here in Mobile are, is this right here, the drainage ditch um, going under these roads. And these drainage ditches are, um, so much water was, was in these yesterday. I'm told by neighbors and uh, contractors working on some homes over here that the water line was actually out of the ditch and above the roadway. And we've seen this in many, many places just because of the lack of uh, drainage because of the excessive amounts of rainfall. Um, so we're gonna continue to cover this for you. We're gonna continue to monitor how long these roads will take to be fixed. And we'll let you know about that on Fox 10 News and also online on fox10tv.com. Bob. Thank you, Michael. Despite the rain, most schools in our area returned to their normal schedules today. Some bus drivers did have to detour to get to Cranford Burns Middle School this morning. That's because of a sinkhole that closed Gerby Road just east of the school. Overall, Mobile County Public School officials say there were no significant problems getting kids to the schools this morning. Now take a look at some video from Fondy Elementary where the only problem was heavy morning traffic. Now, public schools in Escambia County, Florida will remain closed tomorrow because of the major flooding issues there. In Pensacola, nearly a dozen roads have been closed because of the flooding all day. Take a look. This is one road, Fairfield Drive, near the intersection of 72nd Avenue. This BP convenience store at the corner was flooded as well. And people who live in the area say this is just one hard-hit area. How many homes do you know of that are flooded around here? A lot. We took a trip around the, just the Warrington area, Myrtle Grove, and there's a lot of homes. It's just, it's just all over the place. It's just scattered everywhere. Drivers were forced to take detours around Pensacola to avoid a lot of flooded streets. Okay, let's see what's going on with those rain totals. How much rain did we see with this epic event as we had a stalled front and Gulf moisture and some upper energy all coming together in Silver Hill? Nearly two feet of rain. We saw 20 inches of rain and that's in that Fish River watershed. That's why we had the big flooding there and also in Foley. Some of that ends up in Fish River as well, especially on the west side of town. We're talking about 18.9 inches, nearly 19 inches. Orange Beach, a lot of rain. Daphne, over a foot of rain, uh, 13 inches of rain. 
rain. In Mobile, officially at 11.2 inches of rain. We saw uh, nearly 11 inches in downtown Mobile. Theodore picking up nearly 10 inches. And look at some of the totals from the Florida Panhandle. Milton, nearly 19 inches of rain. Pensacola, 15.5 inches of rain. And this is a record amount of rainfall in a 24-hour period for Pensacola. Not just for the date, but for any time. Uh, even in with the, some of the tropical systems in the hurricane. So certainly amazing to set a new all-time record for daily rainfall in Pensacola. Now, doing a whole lot better right now. We still have a few light showers across the Panhandle as we have the front still stalled to the east of us and some upper-level energy getting involved, kicking back off a few showers. And in Mobile right now, we're doing great. We had some sunshine today, a few clouds coming back in late. A couple of light sprinkles in Baldwin County, but nothing that will add to the flooding. And uh, we had a couple of showers very briefly over the Three Mile Bridge in near Pensacola. They've now transitioned over into Santa Rosa County, but this is a much more spotty situation. This is nothing like what we had going on last night. Here are your weather headlines, and we have that rain coming to an end across the forecast area. We still could get a spotty shower, but the flooding threat is now much lower. And it certainly was a record flooding event. And what's really amazing about this is that we're seeing totals which exceeded what we've seen with major hurricanes, which mm -hmm. are typically our main rainfall producers. Right, like Danny, for flooding. example. Yeah, Danny in 1997, we saw Fish River higher than it ever was during Hurricane Danny. Mm -hmm. And a lot of localized flooding throughout the area. We'll continue to track it here on Fox News as we go through the evening. All right, thank you, Jason. You're watching Fox 10 News in high definition television. It is slow going through the eastbound Wallace Tunnel. As you can see, the Mobile Police report an uh, accident with injuries. Again, this is on the eastbound lanes of the Wallace Tunnel. As you can see, traffic is down to one lane. And of course, whenever this happens outside, traffic tends to back up for a while. So until this accident si uh, gets cleared, keep in mind, you can see the traffic backed up, backed up probably all the way down to Virginia Street. And there it is right there. So keep in mind, if you're waiting for somebody to come to the eastern shore, come home from to the eastern shore, they'll probably be delayed because of that accident in the eastbound Wallace Tunnel. Meantime, the overnight rains created headaches for folks throughout Mobile County. Many were left dodging sinkholes and flooded roads even this morning. Fox 10 News reporter Renee Diles was out checking some of the problem spots in our area today. We found a deceptively dangerous situation on Hamilton Boulevard near San Marino Drive this morning. Hamilton was blocked off after someone reported a crack across the road and water flowing under the highway. Now take a look at what happened to a county worker who came out to inspect the situation. He fell waist deep into the ground when a sinkhole opened beneath him. The worker was standing on the dirt just off the road when it happened. Another worker helped the man out. Fortunately, he wasn't hurt. Now, just about every yard on San Marino was flooded, but residents were more worried about the heavy traffic that was being detoured onto their street from Hamilton. Diverting all the 18-wheelers with all the heavy stuff on them down our road. This is swamp land to start with. It's going to crack. It, we're worried about it cracking, and then we're going to be stranded. You're looking at one 18-wheeler the folks on San Marino Drive won't have to worry about. The driver wasn't able to make that sharp turn, so he left the truck here on Hamilton Boulevard while he tries to come up with another option. Okay, it's too, too sharp of a turn to make with this long trail on here. We couldn't get to Jessica Breland's house on Davenport in Biola Battery because her road was flooded. She may have been stranded, but we did spot several people who were willing to drive through the water. Jessica Stagner was one of them. Just moments after telling us she felt safe driving through the water-covered street, she ended up stuck in the middle of the road. She had to call a friend to get her car out. She says she learned a tough lesson. I'm going to say right now, you know, if you ain't got a truck, don't come through here. It ain't worth it. It's not worth losing your vehicle over. The rain is gone, but it may take a while to repair all the road damage. In Mobile County, I'm Renee Dowles, Fox 10 News. Fortunately, there haven't been any reports of serious injuries as a result of the road problems in Mobile County. Take a look at this scene in Baldwin County on County Road 99. It's hard to imagine what must have been going through the mind of the driver here. Fortunately, the woman's husband was able to get her out of that car.
traffic is still backed up going in eastbound Wallace Tunnel, but has nothing to do with flooding or rain or anything like that. There was an accident in the eastbound uh, Wallace Tunnel. As you can see, traffic is backed up when you've got all of those lanes trying to compress down to two, and then because of the accident, one. So if you're waiting for somebody to come home to Daphne or Spanish Ford or Fairhope, you may have to wait a while. It doesn't take much to get this kind of situation going, especially right now, 20 minutes after five. So a real busy time on the roadways and you want to find another route mm -hmm. if you can. Now, as far as the situation is what we saw with the flooding. Look at this, Bob. I want to show you this graphic here. This mm -hmm. is radar estimated precipitation. Mm -hmm. If you take the radar images and the computers kind of crunch the numbers here and say based on what was going on radar throughout the storm event, here's how much we think fell. And there are not a lot of reporting stations down in this area. These are the northern sections of Dito Bay, but possibly 22 to 26 inches according to this Doppler radar estimate. It's not exact, but it gives us a general idea of where we saw the most rain and where you have these white pixels here easily up around 15 inches of rain just south of Mobile down around Dog River out over the bay uh, spots along the eastern shore all in the Fish River watershed and all the creeks that lead into Perdido Bay and we had a lot of flooding down around Perdido Bay, which is unusual, but there were really Really two reasons for that. Number one, we saw an amazing amount of rainfall, so you had a lot of fresh water coming into the bay, and you also had a south wind, which had the tides above normal, so it was really a two-pronged scenario for the flooding that occurred Odo Island and Cotton Bayou and a lot of the locations around Perdido Bay and Perdido Key. Now, let's talk a little bit about Fish River, and taking a look at the gauge here, it was a historic crust this morning at 23.18 feet. It is falling now, and uh, this is is the highest we've ever seen at the Fish River on the Fish River gauge at uh, Silver Hill. Let's look at those uh, historic numbers here and this flood at 23.2 feet about a half a foot higher than what we ever saw with Hurricane Danny and also we had a big flood around 2005 in the spring a good three feet higher than that. So very significant with the flooding there along Fish River and certainly historic in all of South Baldwin County and around Pensacola. A lot of areas that don't normally flood or flood during a tropical situation or flooding because of rainfall. Now our satellite imagery shows that uh, we have gotten some peaks in the clouds today. Nice to see the sun in Mobile County and parts of Baldwin County. Clouds have been hanging over the panhandle and what's going on is we've got some upper energy coming back in. The front is through the area. The air is a lot drier. We do expect a few showers this evening, but it's not going to be a situation that will make the flooding worse because the air is drier and so any rain we see will be much lighter. Now here's a look at those showers back over Louisiana. We're also seeing a few showers that just pushed through Pensacola and are now over into Santa Rosa County. We'll have an update with our storm tracker Doppler radar coming up at the bottom of the hour. Looking at Fox and News Futurecast, showers around for the evening, no big problems. Perhaps a couple of showers around the 10 o'clock time frame, South Mobile County and Baldwin County. That's all out of here by tomorrow, and we'll get clearing once again during the day tomorrow, and temperatures are going to be very pleasant. It's going to be cooler tonight. We're talking about 50s for lows, and not a big shocker to have some cooler air behind the rain. A few scattered, isolated showers also. Tomorrow's day planner, probably the coolest day we'll see in a long time go Going forward, we're about to get into the month of May here and we're getting into summertime heat and humidity. So enjoy this while we have it. Low 70s and sunshine tomorrow, mid 70s, only an isolated shower early in the morning on your Friday. Your extended outlook, the weekend looks great too. 80 on Saturday, 85 on Sunday. Great weather ahead, lots of opportunities to dry out after this major deluge of rain that we've had. And we certainly need it. Some of the monthly totals of rainfall also have been very important impressive across our area. Hopefully uh, things will continue to look good as we head into the month of May and uh, will be much drier than we were in this historic April. Back south again to Fish River where the river rose to a record level last night. Lanise Lagan joins us once again with the latest. That's right. Hey, Bob, uh, we're here, here with uh, Hal Sherrick and Hal, when we first pulled up, I mean, this water was much higher. I guess that's the bright side in this. It is starting to go down relatively quickly. 
It is, it is, and to be honest with you, when I got here earlier this morning, I think it was just around the point it was cresting, mm -hmm. and I've never seen it that high. Uh, just about every east-west artery through Baldwin County was shut down, other than US Highway 98, Interstate 10, and I believe County Road 64 was the only other east-west artery that you get from one side of the county to the other. That's all because Fish River was flooded so badly. Mm -hmm. A lot of rescues happened overnight, up to 40, mm -hmm. and uh, because of the height of the water those rescues did continue today and uh, yeah I talked to one lady that said that she had to uh, wait it out in her attic and then she just had her son-in-law help her to get out uh, and, and it's just you know, those kinds of stories is what we're hearing a lot of along the river that's right and if we can take a look at some of the video I shot today you'll see some of what we found when we got down here this morning since the river didn't even crest until after daylight there was still plenty of folks that wanted out members of the Alabama Marine Police the Department of Converse, uh, Conservation North Baldwin search and rescue uh, and others assisted the Fish River Marlow Volunteer Fire Department in those rescues and I understand that um, everybody that asked for the uh, help was able to get out up to 40 of them mm -hmm. and thankfully nobody was hurt. I talked to some folks mm -hmm. that uh, saw those efforts take place mm -hmm. and they uh, said that the effort was tremendous. All right, Hal, and uh, you know, I've got this rope here because earlier I ran into a couple. They were using this, trying to tie off their boat, trying to ride it up, if you will. They didn't have luck with that. They're going to try and come back tonight. Uh, you know, it's just, it's those kinds of stories, again, that you're hearing. People trying to rescue their boats with a lot of damage. They say a lot of them are probably totaled. And then also, you still have people in their house right now, farther down this way, because they can't get up. You do, and, and a lot of folks, as you can see behind us now, are getting mm -hmm. ready with whatever they can, canoes, kayaks. They're going down to take a look and to just to see what kind of damage their property might have suffered. You can see just behind them a big top pontoon boat that was left up high and dry after the water receded. And I have a feeling that that's going to be uh, a pretty common theme throughout uh, as the water begins continues to recede. All right. Well, thanks, Hal. And uh, as you mentioned, there have been a number of rescues out here. Our Baldwin County reporter, Will Robinson Smith, was working that angle of the story. We've got team coverage for you. He'll have a look at that straight ahead. All right, welcome back. We are back out live here. I wanted to get into the water just so you could see how deep it is. There's a drop off. I'm talking two steps behind me, so I'm not going to go any farther than I am right now. But clearly you get the idea. There's a lot of water out here. People are out in their kayaks. Uh, some people coming out in their boats. Our Fox News reporter Will Robinson Smith was covering the angle in terms of the rescue efforts and the people who were seeking shelter from all of this heavy flooding. Here's a look at what he was able to discover. The way the water was coming in so fast, you know what I mean? It, I hope that everybody got out, you know, safely as it, that they could because it was coming in really fast. That was the experience for Magnolia Springs resident Levi Rue last night as his home was engulfed in water. By the time my mom, we had to grab some clothes, it had already gotten to her at waist deep. He and other residents of JNL River Apartments had to abandon their home late last night, leaving virtually everything behind. As bad as things may look right now at this apartment complex, things were a lot worse this morning. The water level was about at my chest, as you can see from the sediment left on this car. If she would have played or we would have played around, it would have been, you know what I mean? We could have probably got stuck, you know what I mean? You, we could have got knocked into that current and we could have got brushed out there into Magnolia Springs, into the river out there. Andrew isn't the only one who's calling the Baldwin County Coliseum in Robertsdale home today. Emergency crews rescued Larry Coley from his Foley home when the Magnolia River started to rise. Well, I was thinking that uh, we're going to lose everything and I just wanted to make sure my wife and my neighbor was all right because we had to take the neighbor, they carried her on down to uh, the hospital in Foley back down there uh, because they thought she had uh, hypothermia because she was in the water uh, up over a chest. At a meeting this morning at the Baldwin Emergency Management Agency, Sheriff Huey Haas Mack said they're still checking on a number of people. We still have some individuals that have not been contacted by family members. So we're handling those on a one on one basis, going and confirming whether those people evacuated or if in fact they're still at that residence. Rue says at this point, they just need to focus on picking themselves back up. We're going to go forward, you know what I'm saying? We're going to move forward strong and prove that, you know what I'm saying, it can't be held down. In Baldwin County, Will Robinson Smith, Fox 10 News. 
Yeah, and on the lines of what the sheriff was saying, on the lines of what the sheriff was saying, there have been a number of rescues where family members knew that their loved ones were rescued and taken to a shelter. They just didn't know which shelter they were taken to. And then their cell phone batteries died, so they had no way to contact them. Uh, we're going to be out here for the rest of the night, Bob, well into our 9 o'clock newscast. We certainly hope to see you all back here at that time. But for now, we're reporting live in Baldwin County. Lenise Lagon, Fox 10 News. Thanks, Lenise. Fox 10 News meteorologist Chastity Bird was out along Gerby Road in Mobile today where she checked on conditions at the scene of a sinkhole that shut down the road. A lot of vehicles having to do exactly what that truck just did, and that is turn around. I'm here on Gerby Road in between Hillcrest and Knollwood, where before last night this road was passable, and you can see not so much now. The entire part of the roadway has sunken in along with the sidewalk. Now, what you're looking at here, a lot of debris here, silver and black pieces. A car was actually pulled out of this area this morning. Now, something else I want to show you is the debris line. Now we know the water at least came up to the sidewalk. You can see the leaves pushed there against the fence. So the water came up at least to the sidewalk, possibly over the roadway. Of course, the water has subsided now, but those with the city of Mobile say this rainfall event was substantial and taking a look at the damage. You have to agree. Reporting from Gerby Road, I'm meteorologist Chasty Bird. Recovery and repair efforts have begun after some of the worst flooding Baldwin County has seen in more than a decade. One of the hardest hit areas is in Lillian, right on the Alabama-Florida line. Floodwaters collapsed a stretch of a county road. Plus, a driver caught in the destruction almost lost her life. Fox 10 News reporter Steve Alexander was on the scene. You can't cross this stretch of Baldwin County Highway 99. The road has given way, and about 12 feet down, there's a car. Paul Hogan says he's the maintenance supervisor for the nearby Spanish Cove development. And for what he understands, he says a woman driving the car escaped without serious injuries. There was a gentleman here earlier when I came down. He said that she'd, got, she'd climbed out. They thought her a rope. So that's my understanding. You could also see huge pipes under the road. Actually, they're a, a, a drainage tube, and the water flows through, and... Uh, Apparently, the water got over the top and just couldn't handle it, and so the roads gave away. The collapse is a big inconvenience for people who live near Spanish Cove. But apparently, it's worse for the people who live over on the other side of this. Are you all able to get out from your neighborhood? So you're stuck there for today, huh? These people in the Arbor Ridge subdivision are hoping for some quick help. This is one of three road washouts in the same area. Almost a mile away on County Road 99, the Peterson Branch Creek overflowed near the entrance to Spanish Cove. This is, is the second time I've seen it like this, but this is the worst that's actually done damage. And all this area here, that pump right there, usually sets out in the middle, so it's picked it up and washed it up against the trees. You can see the results of everything else. But some people say they'll remember the lightning and thunder from overnight more than anything else. Lightning was terrible. It sounded like a constant train from just lightning That's constantly. That's what I told Gene. I said I heard train. Yeah. Sounds like a train we going through. About... What's his name or her name? Maggie. Maggie. Is she a little scared about everything? Uh, traumatized. <laughs> so are a lot of people here. Reporting for Baldwin County, Steve Alexander, Fox 10 News. And we just received word from Baldwin County Schools that they will be open. A lot of the roads are still dangerous, but keep in mind a lot of the schools, Baldwin County Schools will remain open, will be open tomorrow. Florida Governor Rick Scott toured flood ravaged areas of Pensacola earlier today, and he saw some of the worst damage caused by the storm. The governor says there were 300 calls for rescues, and when you look at this street, you'll understand why. Vehicles stuck in the mud, a roadway gone. The governor says the most important thing, though, is the safety of the people who live here. I'm worried about those families, get them out of those homes, make them safe. I want to thank all the volunteers that have shown up, everybody that worked all night to make sure that these families are safe. Thousands of people lost power because of the storm. And you're taking a live look at traffic streaming into the eastbound lanes of the Wallace Tunnel. 
still kind of slow going because of that accident we showed you earlier. We understand that has now been cleared up a little bit, so traffic should be moving a lot better. Southern Baldwin County and a lot of the county roads, we we're just checking it out on Twitter. There's so many different locations that were impacted by this. Bob, look at these rainfall totals in Silver Hill, 20 inches of rain, nearly two feet. Foley, very similar, almost 19 inches. And uh, we still have a few light rain showers out there right now on radar, but we're not expecting that to add to the flooding. Just passing showers in Baldwin County. We'll talk about your full forecast on Fox 10 News at 9 p.m. We have better days ahead weather wise. And that's good news and lots of pictures on our website to Fox10TV.com. We'll see you back here for Fox 10 News at 9 p.m.